Hi, my name is Yelena Sukhachev, Director of Medical and Scientific Affairs for Beckman Coulter. To commemorate the 110th birthday of Wallace Coulter, we are proud to announce the release of DXH 900-690T casebook, which represents a collection of clinical cases aimed at helping with a better understanding of our technology and the associated benefits for both patients and for the lab. I would specifically like to thank Dr. Maite Sirando, who contributed to this collection of cases and will now do us the honor of presenting one of them, together with the detailed explanation of beckman coulter hematology technology. Welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Maite Sarrando. I'm from Girona, and I have been working in a hematology laboratory for 20 years now. I am very pleased, indeed, to have the opportunity to discuss some cases from our daily routine using the power of near-native cell characterization of the DHH-900 analyzer. So let's start talking about the DHH-900 for a while, about the technology for a streamlined workflow. As you well know, this analyzer has three uh, main uh, principles. The first one, an enhanced culture principle. Second one, the VCS uh, 360 uh, for five angles of light scatter, and then the data fusion information. Let's talk about this for a while uh, more deeply. First, I would like to talk about hematology beckman coulter technology that is based on two modules. The first module is the CBC module based in uh, the culture principle that accurately counts and sizes cell by detecting and measuring changes in its electrical resistance. As you may know, the XH100 has digital impedance with trivial counting and sophisticated voting, extended counting and sweep flow in order to, pre to prevent recirculation of cells, especially red blood cells and platelets behind the aperture. And on the second place, we can uh, talk about the VCS module or automated intelligent morphology technology that provides excellent results for leukocyte differential. Uh, allow me to give you a quick overview of Beckman culture tech. Let's talk then about the CBC module. This module has three apertures for leukocytes and three apertures for red blood cells and platelet counting providing to the system manager many measurements from electronic pulses, as we can see here in this picture, such as a time, volume, count rate, wait time, or pulse width. The system manager uh, processes all these measurements, which include coincidence correction, voting, generation of 256 channels, uh, histogram for white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets, and always remember that we have this interference correction for the non-cells, fragments, and double cells. Uh, in this slide, we can see uh, how works automated intelligent morphology module. Um, with this module, we can obtain differential uh, for leukocytes information using these three measurements that measure actually individual cell volume, high frequency, conductivity, and laser light scatter. The combination of this low frequency current with high frequency current and light scattering technology provides to the system abundant cell by cell information that is translated by the system into data flows. Here we can see as uh, the relation between the volume with the culture principle with the size of the cell, conductivity related to nucleus and cytoplasm ratio, nuclear and granular constituents of the cell, and also chemical composition of the cell interior. And then at the end, the scatter uh, or, or light scatter from laser beam information related to nuclear segmentation, granularity, and size of the cell as well. Microscopically, under microscope, uh, or when we are reviewing these uh, slides, we can identify and describe cells while with the automated intelligent morphology module, we can uh, classify the cell into different clusters using these three measurements or these three parameters. Then using this information, the system produces this data plot 
that displays visual representation of the differential leukocyte. Volume uh, is plotted on the y axis, and rotated light scattered is plotted on the x axis. So we have reliable white blood cell differential results from the DXH900. Remember that near state, near native state server analysis, uh, in, in our case, uh, no, there is no need for stains. So we are uh, analyzing cells as close to the environment as the human body as possible. That extended counting time for samples with low white blood cells count for example, with uh, patients uh, under chemotherapy or other situations, produce reportable results after the first uh, run for every single sample. That we have discounted action, extension up to 50,000 cells per sample that helps to produce and report uh, accurate, accurate uh, white blood cell differential results. And from high white blood cell samples, uh, which is the case of leukocytosis, we have this autocorrection for all the results, eliminating the need for reruns or the interferences as well. Let's talk here about uh, the XH900 technology for a streamlined workflow. The XH900 has technology that allows uh, the measurements of the cells under five angles of light scatter, combining volume and conductivity, obtaining accurate differentials. These BCS measurements uh, are from electro-optical properties from the cells and provide, in each case, morphometric parameters that in the next slides we uh, will see with uh, a table that uh, uh, summarizes all this information. And then it's very important to talk about the data fusion that uh, combines inter and intramodular comparative analysis. It is a real-time analysis that eliminates the need for reruns in this case and increases the confidence in results, improving the flag efficiency uh, in, each, in, in all the cases. Let's talk about the state-of-the-art pathology screening capabilities of this analyzer. We talk here about, first, the research use-only parameters, such as early granulated cell. This parameter detect, detects immature granulocytes, reducing the need for the manual reviews in a lot of cases, in, in a lot uh, kind of uh, patients. And then we have over 70 cellular morphometric data, or called in the literature, scientific literature, I mean, cell population data, providing unlimited capabilities for advanced performance, performance sorry, of abnormal cell detection. As we can see here, and as a summarize, we can relate voltage and axial angle measurement to the size of the cell, medium angle measurement to the cytoplasm structure, and conductivity and low angle measurement to the chromatin and nucleus structure. All these uh, combination, all these relations uh, can be uh, summarized in this uh, kind of table that is uh, um, it's, it's, uh, allowed uh, in the DX800 in the, the screens. So we have for each cluster of cells, neutrophiles, lymphocytes, monocytes, and eosinophiles, we have all these measurements with the mean and the standard deviation for each cluster measured. For the leukocyte differential analysis, what do we have here is uh, the combination of two uh, algorithms, the snake analysis and the template matching. These are two complementary uh, features that allows the machine to identify abnormal cells. First, the snake analysis defines boundaries between population, enabling us to identify abnormal cells, and template, ma template matching um, is used to identify the presence of abnormal cells. The scattergrams are compared to a normal pattern of distribution of this kind of cells, obtaining a matching score with three levels of confidence, high, low, and medium. And this analysis enables, to, enables the DX and analyze to flag samples, identifying this kind of, or this group of um, abnormal cells. 
Um, just to finish the this uh, technology or this tech introduction, um, talking about platelet technology, uh, we have to highlight that we have here accurate platelet results for every single sample without the need of extra channels of extra reruns. We have the here better precision compared to other instruments with a low background for uh, cases with uh, severe thrombocytopenia and an efficient platelet flagging with data fusion technology and intermodule intelligence. Also, I would like to say that MPD results are available with every single measurement of CBC. And just to finish, uh, for the red blood cell technology, uh, as a reminder, this is a high quality uh, channel for analysis results with isovolumetric measurement with triplicate counting, as I said before, with automatically correction uh, for all red blood cells indices, then uh, screening for spurious results such as hemoglobin and hematoglobin systematic check, and then IVD reportable for MRV and IRF in, in all the cases. So the most challenging aspect in this subject is how we can apply all this information to our daily routine. So I therefore propose that we can examine different clinical conditions as a clinical cases uh, in order to say or in order to see how important it is to know about this kind of technology in the, in the analyzer. In this case, we observe remarkable thrombocytopenia and severe neutropenia in these uh, two red squares. High count of monocytes and multiple, multiple flux are present. In terms of differential leukocyte, neutropenia is the most remarkable numerical abnormality. Please notice that critically low platelet count is observed, is reported, but is uh, reported without any flag for review. So we can trust this uh, counting. As we can observe, the scattered plot shows a single cluster without any kind of boundaries between these two colors, blue and green, no split between uh, lymphocytes and monocytes. So uh, high counts of monocyte in this case must be checked uh, under the microscope. Let me talk about this uh, CPD population and these numbers, this information, it's useful, but it's not validated for uh, clinical use. So it's uh, for research use only. Although it's very useful to, to relate because it's, it's strongly related to this uh, cytology. As we can see here in the table at the top, CPD results of the leukocytes show that the mean volume for neutrophils and lymphocytes is higher than expected, marked here with these two red arrows. And it's important to mention particularly the monocyte population, which have higher uh, mouse measure related probably to the cytoplasmic complexity and most probably indicating the presence of abnormal cells inside the cluster of cells, classified by the instruments as monocytes, but actually there, there, there are not uh, mm, mm, monocytes. So as we can see here, these cells are identified by the analyzer as monocytes, but they are actually uh, immature cells related to this um, uh, clinical condition that it's an acute myeloid leukemia. Acute myeloid leukemia is the most important hematopoietic neoplasm to recognize because it can rapidly lead to death. No single morphological characteristic identifies cells as a blast. Uh, in general, blast, uh, as we can see here, are cells that have large nucleus, immature chromatin, a prominent nucleolus, scanned cytoplasm, and a few or no cytoplasmic granules. It has to be identified as quick as possible because this condition can lead to the death to the patient in hours or a few days. So um, let me finish this, uh, this speech with these take home messages. First, uh, CBC results and leukocyte differential results are essential, providing information that leads to the diagnosis of the patient. 
Secondly, cytology has to be performed in all those cases that plaques or numerical alterations are observed. And finally, this is the first step, the CBC and the, the cytology analysis in the diagnosis of hematological diseases. So it's very important to take into account any kind of information that analyzer provides. Uh, let me finish with this uh, uh, picture of uh, my team in, in Girona and a, a picture of my own town. And I think I can quote this uh, sentence to finish this, this speech, that it's very important to, as a reminder. So coming together is always a beginning, staying together is progress, but working together always would be a success. Thank you very much.